Hello, X Traders, and we are going to review option strategies other than buying long uh, or longing calls and puts. We are going to review uh, two specific strategies. One of them is called a covered call, CC, and the other one is called a cash secured put. And if you combine these two, we get something that you probably heard about, which is the wheel. So let's get started. Uh, we are going to explore these strategies and uh, run through some examples that I have recently uh, made and uh, we'll talk uh, about the next video topic. Okay, so options trading is primarily viewed as a sexy long call, right? That's the one that everybody always talks about and, and, and dr dreams about why they got into options trading. And uh, the ticker of that long call rockets in price and yields a huge gain and you'll even see like you know if you research long call maximum profit you'll always see the like, infinite gain you know, if you go to optionsstrat.com you'll see that uh, the, the maximum profit on a long call is an infinite gain right uh, but ter but uh, tickers rarely rocket you know i mean they do go up but they don't moon like completely like we we like to uh believe and hope you know and dream um so they rarely ever rocket or moon to give the option holders more than like two or three percent digit gains, you know, in the best of cases. So let's explore other alternatives to single naked options, which is again buying a long call or buying a call or buying a put. Okay, so we're gonna explore alternatives to that. Okay, so we're gonna explore the covered call and the cash secured put. So what is a covered call? Well, these are used when you own a stock um, and you've profited from it enough and you might want to be thinking uh, you you might be thinking of exiting the trade okay you've already locked in your profit with common stock you're holding that common stock at least a hundred shares and you've already uh, profited from the trade okay so what do you do well CC's or covered calls are sold for a premium so you're selling a call remember in that previous video which link right here uh, there are two sides to options trading and that's why uh, I, I, I thought it's so important to cover the basics of options again because we usually only focus on the long side of the options contract you know who bought the call who sold the call why whoever bought it or sold it so, sorry why whoever bought the call or bought the put did that but we rarely see the other side, which is, well, if you bought a call or a put, well, where did they come from? Who sold it to you? And why is he selling to you? You know, why is that person giddy enough or happy enough that he's going to sell you a call or a put? He's obviously thinking something different from you, right? And this is uh, uh, one of those uh, options, which is they, there is a side, the other side of the call trade, of the long call, is the short call, which is selling a call for a premium. Now, if you sell a call for a premium and you own the actual stock, then you have a covered call, right? Because if you recall from that video, which I'm gonna to link to again right here, you know, the things that they don't tell you about options trading, if you sell a call or sell a put, then your risk is a lot bigger, right? If you sell a call, that means that you are basically uh, obligating yourself to give that 100 shares of stock to somebody else at a specific strike price, right? So you're expecting the price of that stock to go down. Now, you, here's what happens. When you sell the, print, the call and you get that premium, right? The other guy's expecting it to moon. You're expecting it to go down or stay at that level, but definitely don't go past the strike. And you get to keep that premium, right? If the stock stays at or below the strike. But if it goes above the strike, which is when the other guy profits, right? Then you might have to sell your shares at that strike price should that buyer or holder of that call decide to exercise it, right? If he decides to sell it to somebody else, then you might still have to sell your shares to that somebody else who now holds that call. Right. But here's the thing. When you're selling that covered call, 
you get to pick the strike price. So if you've already profited, now again, let's use the same example. If the strike, if it's at 50, and sorry, if the strike is 50, right? And you've already profited at 50, then anything above 50, you have to give in your shares, but you keep the premium. Anything below 50 and you keep the premium. So let's talk a little bit about how that works in a minute with an example. The cash secured put is basically the opposite or the mirror trade using puts, right? So these are options that you can sell. You can sell the puts saying we're selling calls here, but we're calling them covered, co covered calls. And here we're selling puts. Okay. And what happens when you sell those puts, you collect a premium again just like with the covered calls, you collect the premium. Now, whereas with the sold calls, your risk, your maximum risk or maximum loss is that you have to deliver those shares. In the case of the, the sold put, you have to cash secure it in your account, which means that if you sold a put, you're willing or you're obligating yourself to buy those shares from somebody, right? So you have to have the cash in your account to back that up. And that's why it's called a cash secured put. Okay, so you sell the premium, you're expecting the, the stock to go up this time. You don't want it to blow down past your strike price. And if it goes up, then you keep the premium. If it goes down, which means the trade went against you, you keep the premium, but you also have to buy the shares, okay, at the promised strike price. So when a cash secured put, is sold for a premium. Again, you always keep that premium, whether it goes past your strike price or not. But if the trade goes for you, which means that it goes up, then you just keep the premium. If it goes down past your strike price, then you are going to have to buy those shares, but you're buying it at the strike. Okay, so again, you get to pick that strike. So in both cases, you pick the strike. So if you've already locked in profit, you know, and the, the stock is at 50, if it goes either above 50 or below 50, you still get to keep the premium, okay? And that's why you have to be able to choose the strike price, and that's why these things are so useful when you have a portfolio, all right, of common stock. So let's, let's look at an example of a covered call. So here's an example where... Uh, this stock was bought at 960 and it's currently trading at 3156. It's already making a profit. All right. So you own the shares with profit. That's the key. So that means that you would not want this stock to go below 960 because if it does, you're going to lose money, right? It, it's going to eat away. It's basically going to eliminate the profit completely, but it's currently at 31. So you're in the money with these stocks, right? You're, you're definitely profitable. All right, and this is what the uh, chart of this thing looks like, all right? It's currently at around 35.0 something, right? 31.56, sorry, uh, that, that must have been where I had my cursor. Here it is, 31.54 or something, all right? So what do you do? You're gonna, remember, you're gonna sell a covered call. What this means is you've already profited from the stock, you wanna profit a little bit more and don't just outright sell this at market because if you sell it at market, that's fine. You're gonna keep this profit, but you're losing the opportunity to make just a little bit more. So how do you make just a little bit more? You pick a resistance, okay, you spot a resistance. Remember, when we're here, anything below is a support, anything above is a resistance. All right, so this 35 looks like a resistance right here or you could pick one of these swings up here around 36 or 37, All right? So you spot a resistance level above the current, uh, above the current price, okay? So the current price is around 31.5, and you are looking at possibly this resistance here, which would be the confluence of these three moving averages, which are basically the 50, the 100, and the 200, if I recall correctly what I have on this um, E-Trade thing. All right, so we're looking at 35 as the possible strike price. We believe that this thing is gonna go either lower, or just kind of fumble around 31, 32, or go up, but not go, go past 35, okay? And 
this is what the options chain looks like. All right, so we were looking at the 35 call, and here's its data. Okay, this is for buying the call, that's for selling the call. So if we sell this call, the premium we collect is $24, okay? And we are looking at a delta for that particular 35 strike call of about 16%. So you want, uh, if you're selling these, you want to, ha to have an options contract with a delta below 30, obviously, because that means that is not going to be, it's a very low probability that it will end up in the money. All right, so that's what we're doing. We're selling this because we don't think it's going to stay in the money. It's going to be above 35, all right, which is what we want. We want to profit from it if it stays from 35 or below. So we're still going to make money on the shares from 31 to 35, but we will only profit from this if it stays below 35. And basically what happens in the end is if it stays below 35, okay, then it's out of the money. The call is out of the money which means that if you're the holder, you lost. What did you lose? You lose whatever you paid for it. But we're the sellers in this case. So what happens to us? We get to keep that $24 premium, okay, because it stayed below 35, and we get to keep our shares. Now, if the trade goes against us, it means that it does blow through that $35 strike. And in that case, we still, we still get to keep the premium, but we have to sell the shares at 35. Is that a bad thing? No, because at 31, we're already in profit. So at 35, we're going to be in profit some more. Plus, we're going to get the $24 premium that we that we received for selling this call. All right, now let's look at a different example. All right, so here's another one. Cost basis is about $36. It's currently trading at 52, so it's definitely in profit, and we own the shares. All right, so in this case, I looked at two different resistance uh, levels, all right, and I have them over here, the 55 and the 57, and I threw in the 60 just for fun. So we have uh, some levels that are closer to the, the actual current price of 52, such as 55 and 57, and then we have 60, which is way farther away. Now, obviously, the more out of the money you go, the less money you're getting, the less premium you're going to get when you sell these things. If you sell it at 55, you're getting $59 for it. If you set, if you settle for a strike of 60, you're only getting 10. Now, here's the thing. It's more likely to go past the strike of 55, just because 55 is closer to 52, than it is to go past the strike of 60. So that's the name of the game here. This is a much less likely strike to be hit, but it's only worth the risk of getting $10 per contract. Here, this one's a lot riskier. This thing might definitely be reached, but you're getting 60 bucks pretty much for the risk, okay? So here are the deltas on this thing, right? So this 55 strike price is 26%. That's almost 30, that's, you know, basically the threshold that you want to be uh, playing with. So that's pretty close, but the 61 is way out at 5% probability in the money, all right, which is what the delta is. So you could pick the 57.5, which is probably why I threw on this on here. It's about halfway. You get about half the money, uh, well, a little bit less than a third in the case of the 55 call, but it is 12% in the money. Now remember, you can only sell as many contracts as you have shares. So in this case, you can sell one contract. In the case that we saw up here, this one has 200 shares, so you could sell two contracts for this thing. All right, so that's the example with the calls. I have one example here with the cash secured put. Okay, so this is slightly different. In this case, you actually want to buy the shares. And so yeah, you could definitely just go out and, uh, and set maybe a limit order if this thing goes down to 160 then I'm definitely in you know or if this thing bounces and it blows past uh, this uh, moving average 165 then I'll set my order at 165 or you can just go and buy it at market that's fine whatever you know uh, whichever you prefer but there's another way okay you can basically buy it at a lower price and all you do is you pick your uh, whatever the nearest support in this case would be uh, and that's going to be your strike 
all right so we're at 165.5 something like that so we're looking at the support below which is about 160. we believe that this stock could drop but it won't go below 160 spot five okay why because this is a support level you can see some touches here you can see the uh, 100 and the 200 moving average right there so this is very likely going to be a good support so it's at 165 it could drop to 160 but it's very unlikely that it'll go below 160. so that is your strike in the cash secured puts you want this thing to bounce but stay above in the covered calls you want it to hit resistance and go below all right and in this case we look at the 165 and we're on the puts side now so we're on the right side in this case of the chain and in this case for the 160 for the 160 all right which we were looking at we're getting sixty dollars for a contract okay the closer that strike is to the money or at the money the more premium you get you get a hundred more than a hundred dollars more for the 165 which is the current price the problem is that the delta is on this one on the 165 is 35 almost 36 percent so this is a very high probability that this thing is going to go in the money remember we're selling options so we don't want them to end up in the money we want them to end up out of the money so that we can keep that premium all right so in this case this 165 is pretty close to the current price so it's very likely that this is going to end up in the money all right but the other one, the 160, is much farther below, has a smaller probability of end up ending up in the money. It's only 15% delta, or 15% in the money. So again, you want these deltas to be lower than 50. Different, you know, to, completely opposite to what you would want when you're buying contracts. You, When you buy a contract, whether it's a call or a put, you want it to be in the money. So you want delta, the in the money probability, to be greater than 30 okay yeah you could go greater than 70 or something but you know then it's going to be like too expensive but if it's greater than 30 when you're buying an option then it's very likely that it'll end up in the money but we want as sellers of calls and puts we want these things to end up out of the money so we keep the premium and we keep whatever uh in the case of the shares what we had or we keep the cash and then just do it again all right Okay, so here's the overall uh, plan here. When you buy a call, you're a holder, same as when you buy a put, you're a holder. You want those options contracts to be in the money. When you buy a call, you expect it to rock it, which means that the current price is way above the strike, which means that your options contract is in the money and it's incredibly valuable, right? The market is above the strike. Or in the case of a put, which is looking bearish, you want again, that put contract to be in the money because again you're holding it right you want to be able to give it to somebody else the hot potato so you want the market to be below the strike because when you're holding a put you want to be able to put to whoever sold you that put all right at a higher price than whatever the market is if the market tanks to 10 but you have the right to sell it 50 then you're golden so in both of these cases, because you're a holder of options contracts, you want them to end up in the money for those contracts to be very valuable. In the case of selling calls or puts, you want those contracts to be out of the money because you keep the premium and you get the shares because it was a covered call, so you had the shares, and the premium plus the cash because it was a cash secured put. You want to keep the premium and the put. All right. And in this case, if these go against you, then you keep the premium and then you sell the shares for a profit if you had them for a profit or you buy the shares at a lower price than what you would have if you just bought it outright at whatever the market price is. All right. OK, so basically cash, the covered call and cash secured puts are the perfect combination to a common stock portfolio. And here's the. Uh, extra and we'll do a whole video just for this if you combine the cash the covered call again I mean the covered call with the cash secured put then you get the famous wheel strategy all right so what is that wheel strategy well we'll, 
we'll just touch on it a little bit. Basically what you do is you start out with some cash in your account, right? And you sell a cash secured put. That's why you have a cash in your account because it is securing the put. If the put that you sold ends up out of the money, then you just keep your put premium and then you go and sell another one, right? But if at any time, uh, and here it is, right? So if you sell a cash secured put, you uh, basically you're going to enter or you could end up entering a common stock position, okay? Because you need to have the cash in the account in case it ends up in the money instead of out of the money. If it ends up out of the money you're put, then you're fine. You keep the premium. But if it ends up in the money, if the trade goes against you, then you keep the premium, but you also have to buy the shares at the strike that you picked, which would obviously be lower than the current market price when you're, whenever you sold your put. All right. So what happens if the stock ends up above the put strike, okay, then you keep the premium and you keep your cash and you do it again. But if the stock ends up below the strike, then, then basically that put forces you to buy the shares. Okay. All right. Now, now you're stuck with shares. But if you pick a good ticker, then you probably have pretty good shares. Now, once you hold those shares, then you can now, guess what? Sell a covered call against those shares that you already own and you don't particularly want. So instead of getting rid of shares in, you know, by selling them, then you'll go ahead and sell a covered call. Okay, you already own the shares, so the call could do one of two things. The call could or the, the stock could end up below the strike price. And in that case, you keep the premium and the shares that you already own, but you don't necessarily want. Eventually, the stock might end up above the strike price, which means that you keep the premium, but those shares get taken away. They get sold to somebody, to whoever you know ended up exercising that, uh, that call. So you rinse and repeat because now you don't have any shares. Okay? You sold it at a price that you knew was profitable for you and therefore you have more money in your account and you can start wheeling again by selling another put. All right, so that's basically what the wheel is all about. Now, in the next video, uh, I'd like you guys to drop some comments on the, uh, the YouTube channel here and let me know if you want me to uh, pick either one of these two advanced spreads uh, using verticals and calendars or advanced spread strategies, which is actually butterflies and iron condors. Uh, either one of those two, uh, pick one. And the other option is, of course, if there's something else you would like me to, co uh, to cover in a different, uh, in a future video, then go ahead and comment below. All right. So basically, you know, you use covered calls instead of simply outright selling shares that you no longer want, but are profitable in. Uh, you just be careful that your shares might not sell if the strike price isn't exceeded, right? So you end up keeping the premium and you end up keeping the, sh the shares that you possibly don't want, okay? So you might end up keeping those shares for longer until eventually the trade goes against you and then you actually sell your shares. In the cash secured put, right, you use that to buy shares, Okay, instead of just a limit buy order or a market order to sell, uh, to buy, sorry. You use it and then you can get the shares that you want at the strike you want and you can get some premium in your pocket. So as long as the strike isn't broken under, then you just, you keep the premium. But if it's broken under, then you keep the premium, but you also have to buy the shares with the cash that was securing that put. All right, so that's what you use these two strategies for and Remember to look at the trading strategy video, which gives you an overall look at well, what kind of a tr strategy you should use and why it's important to basically to have a trading strategy if you want to be successful as a, as a trader. And uh, I also wanted to remind you guys to, if you are already members, go ahead and upgrade to the lifetime membership plan. Because basically with what you make in about a week or a month, you'll pay for that lifetime membership in you know one to two three months tops it's just it's a no-brainer for me um, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel 
to get uh, notifications when new videos come out. And um, all right, so thank you guys for subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.